Today I'm going to show you how to teleport anything inside Unity from A to B and I'm also going to show you why it sometimes fails when you want to teleport your player from A to B. So inside my game view you can see that we have a very basic setup just to sort of demonstrate how to teleport something from A to B. You know, you're probably going to have something else because you have your own game in front of you. The only thing you need to know about my game here is that I have two platforms. I have platform A which is just a blue platform, that's the one we start on and I want to teleport to platform orange which is over here a and orange um <laughs> i do also have a player which is right here and i just have a very basic player controller set up to him so if we were to play the game and walk around you can see that we just have some basic movement um i can just move around there's not really a lot of things happening um, but i want to get over there and i can't because if i run over here I'm just gonna fall off the edge and I'm not gonna get there. So we have to be able to teleport from A to B in order to get over there uh, in some sort of way. So what I'm going to do in order to teleport my player or any sort of object inside the game is I'm going to go inside my script folder and create a new script. You can ignore everything else I have out here. This is just basic materials for the platforms. I have my player controller, which is just the, the player that I'm walking around with. And I have my scenes folder and the scripts folder. So, you know, there may be some things here, but they're not really relevant. So going into scripts, we're going to right click, create C sharp script and call it something like player teleport or something. So with that script, I'm just going to go ahead and drag it onto my player, which is up here. And once I've dragged it onto my player, I'm just going to go ahead and open up my script inside my Visual Studio. And we're going to get started on teleporting our player. Now, if you're teleporting a player specifically and not just some sort of object inside the game that's just like standing still or something, uh, you will run into a tiny issue, maybe, where even though you're teleporting and you may have looked online and found, you know, other people telling you, oh, you just need to move the position of the player, then you teleport. Uh, but it's not really working for you. And it's for a very particular reason, which is that you're actually moving as you're trying to teleport. But let's just go ahead and do it the normal way first. And if your player is not teleporting, then just continue watching and I'll show you how to fix that issue once we get there. So inside update, I'm just gonna do a basic uh, input where I'm searching for a mouse click or something. You can change it to whatever you want, but I'm just gonna search for a mouse click and then I'm gonna teleport once I click my mouse. So I'm gonna say we have an if statement and I'm going to be checking for an input. The input that I'm checking for it's going to be a mouse button down. So we're just going to say input dot mouse button, get mouse button down. And we're just going to search for the main button, which is zero. So with that, we're just doing something if I press the mouse button. So the way you would teleport your player would be to just say you have game object because we're currently attached to our player with this script here. So the game object is going to be the player. If you don't have this script attached to your, your player, you would just simply, you know, create a public field for a game object and then drag in the player and then reference to it that way like you would with anything else. I'll show how to do that afterwards at the end if, if you need me to, to show that. But for now, we just have a game object dot transform dot position because we want to get the transform component inside the inspector and then reference to the position of the player. So what I'll do is I'll set my player equal to a new position, which is going to be new vector. So we're creating a new vector three. And I'm just simply gonna set this one to the new position. So in this case here, I know for a fact that once my player gets to the orange platform, he's going to be in number 25 in the X position. And then for Y, it's just gonna stay zero. And then for set, I'm just gonna stay zero. And this would actually technically move my object to the platform when I press the mouse button. So let's see what happens. So if I were to go in here, press the game, or press start to play the game. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and click. And you'll notice that nothing is really happening. So why is that? Um, if I were to go back out and actually debug what is going on here, because what is happening? Are we actually teleporting or what is going on? I'm just gonna write something out like teleport, just to see if we're actually teleporting. This is also a very good place to teach people how to use debug.log to, to see if there's anything happening. So go inside your code or inside your editor. And let's just make sure we're inside the console. If I click, you can see, oh, we are actually teleporting, huh? 
So why are we not moving? Now, if we were to try this on a static object inside my game, you know, something, just a box that's sitting on the ground, you know, it may work. But in this case, it's not because I'm trying to teleport something that's not a static object, you know, which is my player. So what I can do instead is I need to make sure that I actually deactivate my player right before teleporting and then reactivate it after teleporting. And this may just be an issue I'm getting because I'm moving my player without using the physics component inside Unity, which is the rigid body component. I have my reasons for not using the rigid body component, and it's just a lot better to me to just raw move my player around just by telling it inside the code how to move the player. So if that's your case, then you're probably running into this issue here. So um, the way to fix this is simply to make sure that inside your player controller, and don't get overwhelmed when I click this, there's a lot of spaghetti code in here. I just wrote out <laughs> very quickly. So this is very messy to look at. Don't critique me on my code here, please. So basically what I did here at the very top is I set a Boolean called disabled to false, which means that my player is not disabled right now. I can still move around, I can do things. And basically what I did inside my update method down here is I just went ahead and said, okay, you know what? If disabled is set to false, just go ahead and allow for the, the mouse to get updated and also allow for the movement to get updated or anything else that may move my player around. So um, everything is put inside a disabled check, which means if a word is set disabled to true, I can no longer move my player in any sort of way. And it's not even gonna check if I'm trying to move my player, which is the one that's actually going in and messing it up uh, inside the teleportation. So what I can do inside my teleport script is I can go ahead and say, okay, all I need to do is deactivate my player, teleport him, and then reactivate the player. So we can do that simply by going in and actually grabbing our player. So I'm gonna say we have a player controller uh, object. Is that what you call it? You have a player controller object. And I'm just gonna call it player controller. And I'm just gonna go ahead and close it off. I also want to make sure that I'm actually grabbing the player controller. So inside the start, which would technically be inside an awake if you had to do it technically correct, because awake is usually used for grabbing components and then you would assign values inside the start, but it doesn't really matter here. So we're just gonna ignore that. Um, so player controller set equal to game object because this script here, the player controller is actually attached to the same game object that this script is on. So we can just say game object dot get components. And then we can just go ahead and grab our player controller, which is on the same game object. And then I can actually go in inside my input here, go down to the bottom, say I want to reference player controller dot disabled, which is right now public inside my player controller so I can actually access it. And I'm just gonna set this one equal to true. So now I can no longer move my player. Then I'm gonna copy it and paste it below. Now, this is not gonna work, however. And the reason for that is the code is happening so fast, it's not gonna have a chance to register this all the time. So if we were to go and actually test this out and try and play it, you'll actually notice that, you know, I can click, 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 click. Nothing's really happening. Why is it not happening? It's because we're disabling the movement script and enabling it immediately in the same run of the script. So basically what we need to do is we need to put a slight delay onto it. Now, the way we can delay things inside Unity is by using a coroutine, I think is how you say it. So if I go down to the bottom here, I want to create a IE numerator. I think it's called this one right here, parentheses, curly brackets. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this one teleport, you know, just to give it some kind of name. And then I'm just going to copy all the code that I have up here, delete it, put it inside my delay, which is down here. Basically a coroutine, like the one we just created here, is something that we can just call upon just like any other method. Uh, and it allow for us to delay certain code to get run inside the actual method wherever we want for whatever amount of seconds or milliseconds that we want. So what I can do is I can actually say, we're gonna yield return new wait four seconds parentheses, semicolon. And then we're just gonna tell it how many seconds we want to wait for. So I can say in this case here, we don't need it to be that long, but let's just exaggerate a little bit for now. So let's say one F, 
which is quite a long time. Um, but just to test out, copy, paste. So now basically we're disabling the player controller, then we're waiting a little bit, then we're teleporting the player, then we wait a little bit, and then we enable the controls for the player again. Um, and like I said, this is exaggerated. So if we were to actually go up inside our input here and actually call upon the coroutine, which is of course called start coroutine, not just coroutine, parentheses. And then we just call on teleport. So inside here, teleport. So if I were to go back inside my game and play, you'll actually notice that now if I were to click, I'm actually moving as I'm clicking. So I'm gonna click, oh, my movement stopped and I teleported. So it works, um, but it takes quite a while. So, you know, when I click, boom, and now I can move again. So, you know, it, it's a little bit weird. So let's go back inside our code, set this one to 0 0.1 instead of just one. You'll notice that now it's actually gonna do it a lot faster. So I'm gonna click, boop, and we teleport it. Um, you can probably do it a little bit faster than that. I, I'm actually not entirely sure how fast you can do this. Let's do 0 0.01, see if it still works, cause that would be amazing if it did. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and play. So as we're playing, I'm gonna click and it works. Okay, so we can do 0 0.01 and it seems instantaneous. Um, so this may look like a hack fix of some sort, but it's important to point out that if you're not using a physics-based player controller, you will most likely run into this issue here. So I do recommend that you, you know, put a disable on your player controller and then enable it after you moved your character um, otherwise, it's not going to allow for you to teleport. Now, before we end off here, I do want to demonstrate what to do if you don't have your script for teleporting on the same game object as your uh, player controller. Since I know some people are going to ask, so I have to idiot proof <laughs> my tutorial. Um, it's not to call anyone idiots, but you know, you have to learn it one time at some point for you to remember it going into the future. So if this is the first time that you're running into this issue and you don't know how to grab something, I might as well show it. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new empty game object. I'm just gonna call this one test or something. Um, some other game object than my player. Inside my player, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete my script for teleportation. I'm gonna remove it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add it to my test instead. So now when I go inside my teleportation scripts, it is no longer attached to my player, which means that now when I'm referencing to game object, it's not gonna work. So what I'm going to do instead is I can do it in two ways. Either I can say, well, okay, so we need to have a game object, which needs to be done. I'm gonna call this one player because we need to grab the player in order to get the player controller. And then inside the start method here, instead of just grabbing game object, I'm actually gonna go ahead and grab player. But I'm gonna go ahead and make this one serialize field, serialize field. Whoop. which basically means that it's not a public game object, which means that, you know, when you make things public, it actually shows inside the, the editor inside Unity and then you can drag stuff to it. If you want the game object to remain private, but you still want to see it inside the inspector, then you just create a serialized field in front of it and it will actually still show inside the inspector. It has something to do with storing it inside the memory of the editor. I'm not gonna get into it, but that's, why you probably are going to see this a lot of times in other tutorials. So just know that it's to make private fields or properties appear inside the editor. So with that, uh, we now reference to the player instead in order to grab the player controller from the player and inside the editor, I'm just simply gonna go into my test and then I'm going to drag my player to the player input, which is over here, because that's what we did when we create a serialized field and it is now grabbing the player instead. Uh, we do of course also need to reference to player once we get down to this part down here in order to transform the player. So just know that that's how you can do it. So if we go back inside the game and we just test it out to make sure it's still working because it should still be working, I'm gonna move around and I'm gonna click and I teleport. And that's basically how I can teleport things. So I hope you learned something from this and you can now continue creating your game since you're probably stuck here and now you saw this and oh, okay, so that's how you do it. Now you can continue until you run into the next era. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.